I'm converting my dream car to electric and in this video you will learn which electric motor, inverter and batteries we picked for our 99 Jeep Wrangler conversion. Come on in! Welcome back everybody, this is Electrified Veronica and this is the fourth episode of our Jeep conversion project. Four months ago we got this Jeep, the Gilmore Girls Jeep, from Nebraska. We removed the engine, the gas tank and all the combustion engine related components and as you can see the Jeep is more than ready for the installation of the electric components. A couple weeks ago we also had a company called Hexagon here in our garage and they laser scanned the whole Jeep and provided provided us with a three-dimensional model that we can use to size the components. We are now working on using this model for our space claim analysis, but more about that in an upcoming video. But I have good news for you, we basically ordered all the electric components, batteries, electric motor, inverter, DC-DC converter, onboard charger, BMS, VCU and so on. In this video I want to share with you the process we went through and the calculations we did to pick the right components, especially the electric motor and the inverter. We'll also share a weight analysis with you where we compare what we take out versus what we put in. In one of the last videos we talked a little bit about which electric drive drain configurations we investigated, altogether four of them, and why we finally picked the front e-drive version. We decided to go with one powerful e-motor and inverter in the front. We did not use the stock transmission but we decided to keep the stock transfer case in order to be able to keep the selectable two-wheel, four-wheel drive configuration. So how did we size and choose the electric motor? In contrast to a combustion engine that burns gas in a combustion process to make the pistons go up and down and eventually drive the wheels, in the case of an electric motor you have electricity, so a current that induces a magnetic field in the motor and makes the road which is in most cases the inner part of the motor, turn compared to the static outer part, that is called the stator. So it's electromagnetic effect, so completely different physical process than in combustion engine vehicles that power your car. And the electricity, so the current, obviously comes from the batteries. This is also the reason why the torque speed characteristics of electric vehicles and internal combustion engine vehicles are completely different, as you can see in these torque speed curves. The unique thing to see in EVs is that you have maximum torque at zero speed and a pretty constant power at all speeds. In the case of an ICE car, you have smaller peak power windows that you need to shift around with the transmission to cover all RPM ranges efficiently. Now for the electric motor there are two different types of e-motors, AC and DC motors, alternating current and direct current motors. The e-motors that we looked into for the conversion project are three-phase AC alternating current motors. AC motors are today state-of-the-art for production electric vehicles. They are very efficient, they can run backwards and we can do regenerative braking, which we want to do for the Jeep. Since they run on AC power, obviously we need something to convert the DC power coming from the high voltage battery into AC. So, and this is what the inverter is doing. So what you're looking for is an e-drive system, a combined e-motor and inverter. In the best case, you get something that you know works together, so a combined system. These e-drive systems typically vary in maximum torque and RPM that they can support, in a maximum voltage and current level, and of course this needs to be in synergy with the battery that you choose. Then of course in weight and size, in price as well as availability. If you only need a quantity of one, not every e-motor supplier will be able to offer you their system. Let's start with some basic RPM calculations, and for that you 
can follow me in our basement where you can find Wisconsin's largest whiteboard. So it all starts with the target vehicle top speed and the required RPM rounds per minute that you get from the wheels through the electric drivetrain through the differentials and gearbox as the input to your electric motor. So we do a super simple backwards calculation. The target top speed for our 99 Jeep Wrangler is 100 miles an hour. In order to calculate the corresponding wheel speed, you will need the tire diameter. In our case, it's 31 inches. The circumference of the tire is two times the diameter, which is then 97 inches. What you can then do is convert the 100 miles an hour into inches per minute, of course, then divided by the 97 inch and you will land at a wheel speed at 100 miles per hour of 1084 rpm. So the wheel spins a thousand times per minute at the vehicle top speed of 100 miles per hour. On our way back to the electric motor, we first go through the differential. Our differential, as we figured out through, you know, just manually turning it and counting the spins, has a ratio of 3.73. This means the RPMs at the drive shaft is almost four times as high as the ones at the wheels, and this is 4044 RPM. So this drive shaft turns four times as fast as this axle. Next thing we need to consider is the transfer case. And in the high settings, we have a ratio of one to one. So the input to the electric motor would be 4,044 RPM. So now you can start looking for potential electric motors. There is just one thing you need to consider before that, and this is the voltage level. I will explain in some of the next videos why we are going with a 400 volt system but of course this is related to the batteries so what we were looking for is a 400 volt system and an rpm requirement of around 4000 as the input to the e-motor now all the e-motors that we looked at with the right performance and voltage level spun at more than 8000 rpm for example, a Tesla motor would be 14,900 RPM. The Ford Mustang Mach-E motor would be 13,800 RPM or the Cascadia Motion around 12,000. So what you then do is combining this electric motor with a gearbox and a gearbox ratio that matches your needs. So you do some combinations in an Excel sheet with the different electric motors and the different gearboxes, investigate different options options. The electric motor that we finally decided to choose is a Cascadia Motion e-motor together with a gearbox with a ratio of 3 to 1. So all the components are on order now. We're so excited and we can't wait to get them. In the meantime, we got this 3D printer here and right now we're printing the DC-DC converter and onboard charger that we also ordered from Cascadia Motion. Since we're using SolidWorks as a 3D modeling tool, we can print all the components that you can see here and see how it all goes together on a one one quarter scale. So inside here you have the rotor and the stator and this is where it connects to the gearbox. This little part here is the parking brake actuator. So as we discussed the Cascadia system comes with the e-motor and the inverter integrated together. So this is the inverter. This comes on top of the e-motor and you can see here the three-phase connector and goes directly attached to the e-motor like this. So it's a pretty compact system. So this is how the whole system looks like, just four times bigger, obviously. I was a little bit surprised about how big this system here is when you compare it to the e-motor, but this is a combined system of a DC-DC converter and onboard charger that we got from Cascadia Motion. Very important thing to talk about are, of course, the batteries. We'll talk about the batteries in detail in one of the next videos, but today I want to approach battery size a little bit from the overall vehicle weight perspective. In general, of course, the more batteries you put into your car, the more range, right? But I'm sure you've heard that the batteries in EVs are very heavy because the 
energy density of lithium ion batteries is of course way lower than diesel or gasoline. And even though an EV is of course way more efficient to bring the energy to the wheels compared to an internal combustion engine car, for a fixed mileage EVs are way heavier than ICE cars. So our goal here after adding the batteries is not to exceed the original overall vehicle weight too much. So what we basically did is we weighed everything we took out of the car in order to understand how much weight we can put back inside. The heaviest part of course was the engine with around 200 kg, then the transmission with 49 and then you can see all the different weights of the intake manifold and all the other parts, brackets, fan, shifters, mufflers, exhaust pipe, gas, gas tank and so on. So all together this adds up to around 400 kilograms. Now on the other side the components that we put inside are the e-motor and inverter system for 64 kilogram, the gearbox, a lithium ion starter battery, the converter and onboard charger, cooling system and cables are estimated estimated weights right now and this would without the batteries right now add up to 140 kilogram which means that it leaves us at around 250 kilograms if we want to have the same weight as the original vehicle weight. What do you think? What is the electric range that we can reach with 250 kilogram batteries? The answer will be in one of the next videos. So I hope you like this technical video. Let me know in the comment section which e-motor inverter batteries you are choosing for your EV <laughs> conversion project. What's coming up next? In one of the next videos we will talk in detail about the batteries, the battery management system, we are showing you some electric range calculation and very important we need to get rid of this mess here. This is the complete stock wiring harness that we took out of the Jeep and now we have to figure out how we reconnect everything to the VCU. Goodbye! See you next time!